Hello, welcome to an episode that discusses the role of development agencies and NGOs in development communication. I am Dr. Pragati Paul, a senior assistant professor at AJK MCRC Jamia Millia Islamia, specializing in development communication, research methodology, advocacy, social marketing and traditional media. Today we shall be discussing the role that development agencies and NGOs plays in the process of development through development communication. Development and communication are two fascinating words that when put together bring along with the various ideas about their use as well as as a richness to how they are applied and what is their role, both of which are shaped by their academic backgrounds and several theories. The existence of extensive subject matter causes the field of development communication to suffer from a lack of clarity. Thus, it is essential that the diffusion of communication happens in a planned and effective manner. To create this clarity, the assistance of development agencies is extremely important in the field of development communication. In easy terms, the agencies or the organizations whose main purpose is to accelerate development process by providing crucial assistance and resource in a specified period are development agencies. The agencies engage in the development process by facilitating development through guidance, participation, inputs, finances, use of technology and understanding markets. The development agencies analyze the society through their socio-economic differences and cultural gaps in order to design appropriate programs to reach their audience for achieving sustainable change. Now we will discuss more about the development agencies and NGOs in this episode. Now let's start by discussing the objectives of this episode. So the objectives of this episode are first to explore development communication and its connection to sustainable change. Second to comprehend the tasks of development agencies in the field of development communication. Third, to analyze the role of NGOs in the development process and to recognize the role of NGOs in India. Now we'll be discussing development communication and the process of sustainable change. The rise of the concept of development communication happened as a contribution of communication and media to the development of the third world countries. It was a framework specifically defined to meet the needs of development in these nations. The framework stated that development communication will be a process of organized efforts to effectively use communication media and its processes to bring about socio-economical improvements in the developing nations. Development communication would work for sustainable change through the development operations and it would engage the key stakeholders for this process. Therefore, it is essential to establish the following and that is a conducive environment for change, assessing risks, prospect to disseminate information, work on inducing behavior change that would lead to social change. The role thus of development communication has changed in today's time and scenario. The focus today is not just economic growth anymore, rather it has now shifted to other social dimensions. And to achieve these dimensions, the key is sustainability and people's participation. Development communication today uses various platforms for communication between the government and community to bridge the information gap. The aim of development communication today is 1. Setting priorities and assessment of risk factor. 2. Empowerment of individuals and strengthen institutions. 3. Promotion of behavior change that leads to sustainable development. 4. Promoting social change while living in a complex political and cultural environment. 
Fifth, enabling participation and pushing for sustainable social accountability. Now to achieve the several aims of development communication, we mentioned that the gap between government efforts and the common people needs to be bridged. In order to create this bridge, we require development agencies that believe in the development and the efforts of communication to bring about sustainable change. Therefore, let us now further discuss in detail about development agencies and their role in development communication. When we talk about development, we cannot ignore the contribution of concerned citizens, volunteer organizations and non-governmental organizations. All these groups assist the government in implementing programs for development and social change. There are several departments of state and central government that run various developmental projects and have several resources in the order to reach people. One such resource is developmental organization. They conduct researches, undertake studies and create appropriate development messages for disseminating information and awareness related to various issues of development. Development agencies play an essential role in the growth and development of a country. These organizations use several forms of media ranging from mass media like television, print, to folk and local media like community radio and puppet shows to reach out to the community and provide them awareness. Several communication theories like two-step step flow, diffusion of innovation and the extension approach are quite harmonious with new modernization theories. When we look at the diffusion of innovation theory, we can see that according to its perspective, communication's role is to provide innovations and technologies to individuals through developmental agencies. Their role is to fashion an environment for change by elevating climate for modernization amid the people of a society or a nation. The different aspects of development agencies under development communication, it consists of government organizations like the National Planning Commission, Finance Commission, State Planning Board, District Planning Committees who work based on the Sustainable Development Goals and design interesting programs to achieve development. In order to implement the programs and the essential finances, they need the help and assistance of non-governmental organizations that work at state, district and village levels. NGOs and NPOs, non-governmental or non-profit organizations that work according to the guidelines of the government to achieve their designed objectives in order to further the process of sustainable development. International organizations like World Bank, International Fund for Agricultural Development, USAID, UNICEF, United Nations Development Programs, UNDP, these agencies monitor the growth of different nations and accordingly design goals that need to be achieved by the nations as a whole in order to sustain development. Mass media, which includes all the media resources necessary in order to reach the target population. We have already discussed in details about mass media's role in the process of development. The work and process of development agencies can be described through the five I's. And the five I's refers to 1. Inform. Inform each every person about the concerns and the issues. 2. Instruct. Instruct each person about how to achieve cooperation and collaboration to synchronize and complement the development programs. 3. Inspire. Inspire each individual through mutually shared expertise and talents. 4. Insist. Insist that each and every development program must be introduced to provide to the people. 5. Involving. Involving processes that promote inclusive involvement through integrating all the expertise, programs and innovations techniques by initiating cooperation and collaboration among the people. Therefore, development agencies are introduced to design a team framework between public sector, private sector and civil society and to offer meaningful and efficient use of local resources. To speed up district level development, and also to offer sustainability to diminish inter-regional and intra-regional differences. Furthermore, to precisely outline the role of development agencies, 
let us look at the various points. So, its main role is to generate awareness among the population about issues concerning the society. The guiding and capacity building of nations undergoing severe health and socio-economic issues. To become an advocate of raising global awareness among countries and nations. To enable people to get motivated and take part in their own development process through enabling participation. One of the biggest examples of development agencies working together in today's time is the work that the world is putting into fighting the pandemic coronavirus. From World Health Organization WHO and International Development Agency to Hemcon Foundation, a national level NGO, each of them are fighting against the crisis created due to the pandemic. Every country's government agency, every international agency, every developmental organization and even media organizations are involved in this fight by disseminating messages of precautions, making people aware about the vaccine and its advantages and informing people about the instructions for the safety by the government. The World Health Organization informed the world about the growing pandemic coronavirus and urged nations to join hands in order to start research on the disease. The different nations joined hands and started the research. Funds were gathered and disseminated to develop vaccines, design PPE kits and testing kits. These kits once designed, the formula was then distributed to government organizations of each nation who further developed testing kits for the citizens in order to detect the severity. Each government organization, especially hospitals, equipped them to fight the pandemic through creating precautionary and cure guidelines for people to follow. NGOs join hands with the government organizations to disseminate information on the disease, information about the precautionary measures like wearing a mask, keeping safe distance and using a sanitizer or washing hands for 20 seconds. Several NGOs also raised funds and started providing healthcare assistance to those who were not able to get beds in hospitals, medications or oxygen cylinders due to the increasing number of patients or due to financial constraints. The, this pandemic is a true and a live example of how communication flows through different levels of development agencies. These agencies are not individual entities. They are all connected and have to work according to a team framework to reach overall sustained development. Development agencies as discussed above involve several voluntarily government and non-governmental organizations. NGOs play a massive role on the part of government as well as development organizations. They work on a non-for-profit basis and aim to promote several governmental programs for development so that it reaches the right people. They act as a bridge between the government agencies and the population of a nation. Now let's look into this in more detail. What is the role of NGO in development communication? NGO non-governmental organization there are several synonyms to an NGO like non-profit organization, community-based organization, third sector organization and grassroots organizations. NGOs can be described as a bridge as they can comprehend the perception of people at the grassroots level as well as share the changing global perspectives with people as well. We can safely say that they think globally and then they act locally. NGOs are progressively being used as a means for development. They are gradually becoming the measures to people participation. They work on several issues like women empowerment, climate change, health, poverty, literacy and so on. Some of them focus on regional specific issues while other work on national issues. Most of these issues stem out of the sustainable development goals designed by United Nations along with assistance of 195 nations to change the world for better. These goals were designed in the year 2015 and will be reanalyzed in the year 2030. Now I will be talking about the sustainable development goals. Goal 1 End poverty Ending poverty in all it forms from across countries. Goal 2 End hunger 
ending hunger and achieving improved nutrition along with food security and promotion of sustainable agriculture. Goal 3. Well-being and good health. To ensure well-being and healthy living all over the world. Goal 4. Quality education. To ensure unbiased and inclusive education ensuring quality and lifelong education and creating learning prospects for all. Goal 5. Gender equality. To ensure empowerment of all girls and women and ensure gender equality. Goal 6. Sanitization and clean water. To make sure accessibility and sustainability of water management sanitization for all. Goal 7. Energy that is clean and affordable. To provide a pathway to sustainable, dependable and inexpensive energy resources to all. Goal 8. Economic growth and decent work access. To provide work for all that is inclusive, sustainable and ensures growth economically. Goal 9. Industrialization, infrastructural development and innovation. To create durable infrastructure, foster innovation and sustained industries. Goal 10. Reduced inequalities. Reduction of inequalities based on gender, race, caste or class among nations. Goal 11. Sustainable communities and cities. To create all-encompassing, safe, resilient, inclusive and sustainable communities and cities for people to live. Goal 12. Responsible production and consumption. To ensure sustainable production and consumption of resources. Goal 13. Climate action. To understand, take immediate actions in order to fight climate change and its impact all over the world. Goal 14. Life below water. To protect marine life and ecosystem and ensure sustainable use, seas, oceans and marine resources for sustainable growth and development. Goal 15. Life on land. To restore, protect and sustainably use terrestrial ecosystem, promote sustainable management of forests and desertification, reversal of land, degradation and stop biodiversity loss. Goal 16. Build strong institutions and promote peace and justice. To ensure that peace and justice prevails in societies and is available to all in order to promote inclusiveness and accountability of institutions. Goal 17. Partnerships to achieve goals. Creating global partnerships and ensuring sustainable development and strengthening means of implementation. Numerous challenges have been brought about along with the arrival of globalization that will need developing new models for participation, development and approaching the common problems. The initial planning for development was being handled by the government organizations but later it was assessed that government systems were excessively rigid to resolve these issues as these systems are highly bureaucratic in nature and it is a complex mechanism. A reliable NGO with suitable and adequate skilled input and training can map and implement a government program. They can analyze the program, enlist the appropriate audience, design appropriate messages, select the right media for dissemination of messages and create the environment for change. They are also extremely dedicated and analytical when it comes to monitoring and evaluation of the design programs as they see these programs bring implemented at the grassroots, they know the community and thus provide a bottom-up feedback. Therefore, government now focus on allocating sums to NGOs that are largely enough to help with the process. A NGO strength is based on its approach and practices in order to motivate people to be a part in the development process. Working for development requires the government to have a target-oriented approach. It usually works as a consultant and has the least concern about needs and tribulations of the people. However, NGOs work with an informal approach and in a friendly manner. Their main aim is to motivate people to be participants in all levels of the program. NGOs are social units that are focused and have well outlined roles. They comprise of people who assign tasks among themselves and work on a common goal. 
These people are experienced, self-motivated, have a high aptitude, competence, aspiration. They are value driven and committed as well as adaptable and genuine and they feel ownership and empowerment to work in such organizations. The NGOs handle issues related to development and their ideologies differs widely. While some NGOs are action oriented and others are both constructive and action oriented in their work ethics. Now I'll be talking about the objectives of NGOs. So the first objective is to organize, motivate and mobilize underprivileged people and help them understand their rights. The second objective is the protection of means of livelihood for people. Third is to raise voice against injustice and give support to the voiceless in the society. To build awareness and conscious for development among the societies and nations. Fifth, to provide as a source of development, leadership and empowerment and contribute to overall well-being in the society through participation. Sixth objective is to focus on making people self-reliant by utilizing the locally accessible natural resources. Seventh, to promote educational development. Eighth objective is to promote women empowerment and ensure their status in the society. Ninth, to develop avenues for women entrepreneurship. To ensure measures and promote awareness on climate change. And the last is to protect and implement rights of wildlife. It also talks about that how the NGOs also help in assisting the implementation and evaluation of development programs and also help implementing government schemes in the rightful manner and act as a watchdog against corruption. Role of NGOs in India. 27th February marks the International Observance of World NGO Day. The goal is to inspire individuals to become actively involved with NGOs and to encourage a greater connect between NGOs, public and private sector. This day was designed very recently. However, in India, NGOs have been in existence since almost a century. The first NGO in India was founded by Rabindranath Tagore's nephews, Sri Gangendranath Tagore, in the year 1970. He took the help of local weavers and artisans of the Kolkata Handloom. This NGO was called Bengal Home Industries Association and it was formed and catalogued beneath Indian Companies Act 7, Section 26 in 1917. This was a non-profit sharing organization and its aim was to develop and promote cottage and small scale industries support arts and crafts and aid artisans in becoming economically independent so that they can purchase raw material and market their goods. NGOs have been in India since a very long time. Since centuries, the tradition of helping each other in the times of need has existed in this nation. In the initial times, such services were provided by people motivated through the religion, beliefs and feelings. It was popularly believed in India that service to people is service to God and therefore through following these footsteps they would achieve ultimate salvation. Voluntarily actions in the past were guided by the spirit of charity and selfishness which had found its place even outside of the religious channels. The help and support till a majority of past years had been voluntarily and selfless until the 18th and the 19th century when organizations started coming up specifically for this kind of work and activities in order to be more organized in nature. The 19th century reforms movement was one of the first kind of organized actions on a voluntarily basis taken for the service of the society. During this period issues like caste, rigidity, untouched, ability and child marriage were at their peak. These voluntarily movements and reforms worked in an organized manner cutting across caste barriers and lines based on creed and work primarily on the secular and liberal ground. Several voluntarily organizations were formed by Mahatma Gandhi during this era to fight these evil traditions and also to create powerful forces against the British Raj. Some of these organizations are self-employed women or Association, Eklavya, Disha, 
which are based in Gujarat. After India achieved independence, an immense growth was seen in the formation of NGOs in India. Along with the establishment of democracy, people understood their fundamental rights, their freedom to equality and speech. Alternatively, the government of India started formulating development plans under which they formulated an array of community development programs and Green Revolution was launched. Apart from the above, India also stepped forward towards an accelerated process of urbanization, industrialization and modernization. Growth of education and decentralization. These practices awaken people to the existing economic and social inequalities and other social levels prevalent in our country. It widened the rural urban divide resulting in formation of slums, pavement dwellers, urban unemployment and lack of skilled labors, pollution and depletion of natural resources. All these issues were too large and affected a great population. Thus, the emergence of NGOs working in collaboration with the government agencies was extremely essential. Their role has enhanced since due to the weakening of the state in upholding the welfare and the well-being of the citizen. Today, NGOs act as a bridge between the government and the citizen. They ensure that the gap is filled and people get all the benefits of development program. NGO's role today is neither aggressive nor complementary to the existing sectors. NGOs play a role that is liberal as well as radical. It takes up issues that no political parties are ready to touch. They cope up with an enormous diversity in terms of situations and populations that the government alone is unable to cope up with. They encompass issues not only generated locally but also nationally and enforce their work internationally as well. The government of India envisions a more vast and active role for NGOs as their local interactions are far more effective. NGOs are able to work locally as well as nationally as they can address issues at the grassroots levels and understand the sense of urgency of an issue as well as the problem of the local people. The effectiveness in the level of communication is extremely beneficial to bring about change as they are able to better address issues which the government is unable to even comprehend. NGOs are therefore a great movement to bring about global revolution in which members of non-state communities on one hand and non-territorial civilizations on the other are developing and playing a new role which is the most essential role, the role of a watchdog for the government. However, the biggest challenge that NGOs are facing today is the rising dependency on government funds or funding from foreign organizations or foundations like the World Bank or any international foundation. This dependency has led them to lose their flexibility when it comes to choosing a cause that they truly support. So now I'll be concluding this session. Development organizations and non-governmental organizations working at both national and international levels have gained appreciation for their services in community development. These organizations are focused on creating awareness and passion for participation in development projects. Fighting against human rights, violation to ensure humanism, social exclusions, domestic violence and others have been common goal for them. Ultimately, we have to understand that all these organizations have to work in a linked manner. None of them can work in isolation. Therefore, there is a need for a solid communication structure between several organizations at the national and the international level and also between government and media organizations. As you've already discussed in this episode, development communication is essential to create participation and sustainable change and these organizations have to be effective to the process of development communication by breaking the barriers and creating transparency in the process of development. And now it's a time for a quick recap, what we've already discussed. So in this session, we've discussed the concept of development communication. It came to existence as a contribution of communication and media to the development of the third world countries. Development communication is a process of organized efforts in order to bridge the gap between government efforts and people of a nation so as to provide a sustainable change. 
We also discussed the development agencies and organizations are identities that came into existence to provide information and assistance about development issues to people in an informed and a planned manner. These development agencies can be divided into government agencies, non-governmental organizations, international associations and media organizations. NGO plays a massive role on the part of government and they work on a no-profit objective and aim to promote several governmental programs for development so that it reaches the right people. This is all we have for you today. We shall soon return with a very interesting episode. Thank you and Namaskar. Thank you.